When you're calculating the rate of return for a stock or for an index like the S&P 500, you have to be very careful to understand what type of return it is you're calculating. Are you calculating an arithmetic return or a geometric compounded annual rate of return? And that matters, and I'm going to explain why in this video. So let's take the arithmetic rate of return first. So let's go ahead and calculate that. If we would just take 25%, let's say we have for year one, we have a rate of return 25%. We add that and then we subtract out 40 for year two we have a loss of 40 percent and then we add 30 for year three our rate of return this is for some stock let's say and then we divide that by three and that's going to give us a rate of return of five percent let me just change colors here so that will give us a rate of return of five percent if we had used the arithmetic method okay now if we were to use the geometric or compounded rate of return we might get a very different rate of return so let me go ahead and I'll just calculate that it's a little more involved and if you don't quite follow it I, I suggest you watch the video uh, that I did on that so we'll take the 1.25 times 0.6 times 1.3 and the reason that this 1.6 might throw you off is basically when we lose 40 percent of our investment that's the same way as saying well we're keeping 60 percent of it or 0 0.6 right so we're going to take all of that but then we're going to raise that to a power. We're going to raise that to a power, just one divided by the number of periods. And there's three years here. So we're going to raise it to the one third power. Okay. And then that whole thing, that whole thing here, we are going to subtract one. Okay. Now that is going to give us negative 0.008. Point zero zero eight. I'm just going to round that. Let's just let's just say that's the same as basically negative point zero one, which is the same as saying negative one percent. Now, if you see, if you've noticed immediately, in one situation, when we do the arithmetic mean, when we talk about that rate of return, we actually have a, a positive five percent. But when we use the geometric or compounded rate of return, it's actually negative. It's not just a different rate of return. It's actually a, a negative number because we've lost money. And you might be wondering, how could this be so different? Well, basically, the, the arithmetic rate of return does not consider volatility. It doesn't take into consideration the fact, I mean, basically, it's just averaging these three rates of return. But you have to remember, for example, after year two, when you've had that negative 40%, that's affecting the balance now that can earn a rate of return of, of, point, of 30 percent in year three, right? You have 40 percent less money that can earn that 30 percent here. And when you're using the arithmetic return, it's not really considering any of the volatility and how the balance that is earning whatever rate, let's say at the beginning of year two or you begin of year three, it's not considering how that balance changes over time. It's just taking basically the average rate of return. Uh, so that's, that's really what's driving the difference. So you might wonder then, why would we ever use uh, the arithmetic rate of return? Well, we want to use that when we're looking at future performance, when we're trying to say, okay, what do we think is going to be the expected rate of return for this particular stock or this particular uh, portfolio of assets? When you're looking, you know, forward-looking information, you're trying to compute an expected return, then it's actually not going to be that problematic to use the arithmetic uh, rate of return. Now, when you're looking backward, when you're looking at historical information, right? So let's say you're talking about like a mutual fund and you want to look at that mutual fund's performance over time, then you want to be using the compounded annual rate of return. And you might even see something in your mutual fund prospectus that says something like uh, you know, CAGR, compounded annual growth rate, et cetera. And that's really, that, that's this geometric rate of return, right? You can call it geometric and call it compounded, but that's the idea is this is understanding that, okay, because of volatility, the balance that is earning a rate of return is going to change over time. It changes from year one, to year two, from year two to year three, the balance is changing. And so you're having a bigger or smaller balance the next year that's, that's earning that rate of return. So if you really want to evaluate a mutual fund or, or some stock or you know, the S&P 500 and you want to look at historical information, then you really need to be looking at this geometric compounded rate of return rather than the arithmetic rate of return.